It's been a full day since the ship left the Halo's orbit. I've been trapped on here, floating through space, to a destination I'm not even sure exists. The unknown is frightening, and to some it's a legitimate fear. I can understand that. It's a curious feeling, trying to figure out what's next, what's going to happen, is there a way out? And as I ask myself these questions, a sense of dread sinks onto me. Another anxiety-filled question adds more weight of dread. This frigate, the Winter Solace, was sent to Delta Halo for a simple expedition to search the remaining caves deep within the ring's surface, untouched from the glassing beams of a Singhali fleet. I was so excited. It was my first time on a Halo. The commander of the ship, Commander Pemberton, was the one to bring the frigate down to the surface. The ring was practically barren. No life, just a desert with glass storms that could be seen stretching along the ring's surface for miles. It's breathtaking to be able to see the entire surface just by following the loop of the atmosphere. The commander deployed everyone on the expedition, including all of the ship's UNSC personnel. His plan was to create an outpost of sorts outside of the cave that we was positioned at. There wasn't any tanks or any other heavy weaponry to secure the area. Just a whole lot of war fogs and a few jackrabbits to scout the area. But what we lacked in arms, we made up for in numbers. We had escort parties that would move in war thugs down the cave. Some had carriages in the back to carry more personnel. Along my team's war fog was another three escorting us deeper into the cavern. And in one of those war fogs was a Spartan. I've never really had the pleasure of working besides one before, and let me tell you, these guys are huge. Their augmentations made them an intimidating force, and having a Spartan on the team made me feel a whole lot more comfortable being on this ring. But that feeling of confidence was short-lived. I'm not telling you this story from my apartment back on Earth, no. I'm stuck on this ship with a nightmare haunting me. It happened about two hours after working in the cave. Me and my team was checking out the ancient structures hidden deep within. We was curious about the construction because the architecture was similar to the forerunner designs, but a lot older somehow. They looked to be made out of old, jagged stone. They almost reminded me of Earth's historical monuments around the globe. As my mind wandered and my team discussed their findings, that's when we heard it. Screams. Screams over the radio, as well as echoing off of the cave walls around us. Marines shouting for backup further into the abyss of the dark cavern. As quickly as the screams started, shots could be heard following them. I walked out of the structure to see the bright yellow glow of shots flaring up, rhythmically and reflecting on the cave walls. The gunshots would momentarily light up the tunnels, but darkness would slowly prevail. The Spartan that was guarding us took aim towards the area of the cave and told us to get back to our warthogs and drive back to the entrance. Without any hesitation, one of the scientists on my team, Ralph, jumped into the driver's seat of one of the warthogs and drove, not waiting for anyone to get in with him. I looked back to the Spartan as he watched the Warthog take off down the cave, in the opposite direction of the gunshots. I half expected him to give chase, but he simply turned back to the danger and began slowly walking further into the cave. The rest of my team got into one of the Warthogs and we drove. We heard everything over the radio. Everything. Some of the marines seemed to know exactly what was going on and shouted down the comms. It's the flood. We need to evacuate. It's the damn flood. That's pretty much all we heard as we was driving back. Cries of pain and screams. We heard nothing coming back from the Winter Solace. Nobody from the ship had sent out any orders. Their side of the comms was quiet. I half expected it to be in fragments of its former self. I'm ready to see a Covenant splinter faction waiting for us to come out. I had no idea what the flood was. Well, 
I definitely know now. I can't blame the UNSC keeping this sort of stuff classified. Because if the rest of humanity knew, I don't think Earth would be as stable as it is today. We saw things chasing the warthog. I didn't know what to think at first. I thought they could have been animals native to the ring. And then I saw what was following these spider-like beings. Marines, but different. They were mangled with arms hanging off of the bodies and long tendrils to take their place. They were too slow to catch up, but they definitely weren't stopping. I looked past the pursuing corpses, and then I saw it. The very small blue lights getting closer to us, catching up to the warthog. I recognised them lights, but couldn't place where I'd seen them before. And just as a gunshot lit up more of the cave, it dawned on me. It was the Spartan, his armour's lights flickering as it followed us. But it wasn't a Spartan anymore. Picturing its face makes me tremble. It was giving chase. And this corpse wasn't losing our tail. I told the member of our team who was driving, David, to put his foot down and get us to that ship. He did his best, avoiding the mangled bodies and broken vehicles, and as we got to the end of the cave, the Spartan had caught up. It leaped over the Warthog and stood in our path. Dave didn't stop. He kept going, ready to ram the dead Spartan. I tried yelling out to him not to run it over. I know that attempting to crush that thing wouldn't work. Spartan's augmentations made them incredibly strong, enough to pick up a Warthog. As we came into contact with the dead warrior, the Warthog flipped over as the Spartan's massive tendril dug into the ground and took the full impact of the force. I remember hearing almost nothing for a second as we gained air and flew out of the cave. When we landed back on the ground, the Warthog's carrier frame bent down, trapping everyone in the titanium coffin. Most of them died, apart from one that was screaming for me and Dave to help. We ran over with heavy heads and in a panic, tried our best to pull her out. I can't remember what happened first. Jill's head being ripped from her shoulders, or Dave being impaled on a massive bone-like sword. As soon as I saw the blood, I ran. I knew if I stayed I would end up just like them. I made it to the frigate just in time as the vehicle ramp started to rise. I looked back to see the undead Spartan ripping out the bodies from the Warthog's crippled frame. It was trying to feed the spider-like things. As I was staring in horror whilst the ramp slowly rose, that's when it snapped its head towards me. It saw that I was escaping, and it was not happy. It let out an earth-shattering scream and leapt towards the ship's direction. My ears felt like they was going to pop. I watched it as it made its way closer to the frigate's vehicle bay, so I ran. I knew that if it wanted to get on, then nothing was going to stop it. I ran through the maze-like corridors and found the ship's security room. I found a surveillance room, hid inside and locked the doors, praying for that thing not to give chase. As we left the surface, I scanned through the cameras to find the bridge. The commander was at his seat ordering the four lieutenants around as we gained altitude. That piece of scum had decided to just abandon everyone. He didn't say anything over the comms to anyone. He was a coward. As tears was filling my eyes in grief for my team, I flicked to the vehicle bay on the cameras. I flinched away from the screen as a now very angry undead Spartan had made its way inside and was sniffing around to find me. It knew I was here and it began its way down the hallways, hunting me. I started scanning back through each camera, watching the monster move through each room and corridor. I moved back to the bridge's cameras and saw that one of the lieutenants had moved. He wasn't on the bridge with the commander anymore, and was now strolling down one of the hallways towards the canteen. The lieutenant had no time to react as an undead Spartan dived from out of one of the rooms and sprinted at terrifying speeds towards him like a rabid animal. He whelped in pain as he was slowly ripped in half. The noises that he made 
was the most haunting sounds I will ever hear in my life. The commander and the rest of the crew heard the screams. They immediately turned towards the doorway and one of them ran towards it and slamming his fist against the button, bringing the airtight door slamming down. The dead Spartan knew where his next prey was. It dropped what was left of the crew member and began running in the bridge's direction as it reached the closed door. The crew pulled out the pistols and took cover behind the consoles that were scattered around the bridge. They aimed at the door and waited for their ultimate demise. As the door kept slowly bending, being hit by what could only be tons of force, the commander spoke up shouting, get ready, to his fellow crew. It finally broke. The crew immediately began to open fire, only antagonizing the bloodlusted creature. I could tell you that they died pretty quickly, which is true, but I'd never want to die like that. Their bodies were thrown around the bridge like children's toys and bones could be heard snapping and popping around the room. Screams and whelps echoed down the hallway as they were ripped open and thrown into each other. It was a mess. I couldn't look away. I was terrified for my own safety. There is absolutely nowhere I'm going to escape in one piece. I fell back onto one of the security consoles and sobbed. I just sat there crying, not knowing what I should do next. How would I even make it off the ship in one piece? It's like a tank on legs. I looked back up at the screen. The Spartan was still, not making any movement besides slightly twitching. It was listening for something. That's when I realized what I had done. I looked to a button on the console. It was slowly blinking a blood red. I had knocked the speaker system on. It could hear me, and then it simply looked towards the speaker underneath the camera, and a ripped mouth filled with new sharp teeth smiled at me, and then it ran out of the bridge. I thought I was done for. There was no way I was surviving. It knew where I was, and it was definitely coming for me. I looked around the room desperately to find somewhere else to hide, or something to use as a weapon at least. As if presented by God himself, a glimmer of red light reflected off of a vent just in the corner of the small room. I looked around for something to break off the cover. A massive slam rocked the door that separated me from the now extremely close undead Spartan. I was running out of time. I knew if I didn't get through that vent, I would end up just like the rest of the crew, or even worse. I saw a toolkit hiding behind the security console in the centre of the room. I dived towards it, looking for a tool to help me reach my salvation. Digging through, to my relief, I found a screwdriver just the right size to unscrew the screws in each corner of the vent. Another loud clash is heard and the door begins to bend inwards. I stand on the console and begin fumbling around the vent unscrewing it. In a panic, I drop the screwdriver and it falls to the floor, rolling under the console. I dived back down to pick it up and as I stand, the door once again bulges inwards towards me, threatening to break. I panic and jump up in a final life-threatening effort undo the last screw and release the vent's small hatch. I hop in as quickly as possible, no longer trying to stay calm. As I manage to crawl into the small vent, I turn around and try to fit the vent's case back on as the door finally breaks through. A grotesque, distorted Spartan makes his way into the room and begins scanning his gaze across the small spaces. I watch in horror as it breaks the screens of the security monitors in a rage. I stare, frozen in fear, as it walks back out of the room. I didn't move an inch, trying to stay quiet as I hear it move out of earshot. I think I'm safe. For now.